Today we are here to present our uh, design thinking group project, which is about applying um, design thinking process to an organization problem to solve, uh, to give some uh, workable solution. Uh, so we have selected uh, Unitech as our client, uh, our case organization. Uh, before we start, let me introduce our team. We are Team Kiwi and Abedini, Priyanka, Clayton, and Makavi. Uh, so, here's our today's presentation content. Uh, first of all, we'll be talking about our client overview and our wicked problem. And then we'll be talking about our design thinking framework and all the tasks we have done um, in every stage of design thinking process. Finally, we'll be talking about our recommendation for our client. Um, let's move on to our client overview. Uh, Unitech is one of the largest tertiary institute in New Zealand and approximately 16,000 domestic students and 400 uh, international students have studied uh, for, for the qualification of level 1 to level 9. Um, so based on our um, data collected through the interview of, of interviewing our client and reviewing accessible uh, documents of Unitech, we identified uh, there was a decline of uh, Maori Pacific, uh, enrollment number of Maori Pacific uh, women from 2018 to 2021. So based on uh, this data, we analyzed and we built up our wicked problem for our project which is uh, how can Unitech launch a resilient, effective, and culturally appropriate tertiary pathway for Maori and Pacific women to help increase enrollment numbers. So here's the uh, lyric link and leafer uh, design thinking framework we have selected to our project. Um, let's move on to our design thinking process. Uh, according to first two stages of our design thinking process, which are understand and observe, we conducted face-to-face -face interviews and questionnaire surveys with Maori Pacific women to identify their uh, needs. And then uh, we categorized all the data under six sections of uh, empathy map to enhance, the, enhance our understanding of Maori Pacific women's needs to continue their um, tertiary education. So now I would like to invite Priyanka to continue our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Bodhini. Hello, everyone. Uh, as we uh, as we identified some needs, pains, goals, and uh, uh, obstacles uh, that hinders uh, that hinders them to take uh, the tertiary education from the empathy map, we categorized some unique unique criteria uh, according to their personal needs. And uh, I'll go through one by one. Uh, so the the culture, how how culture uh, is important for them because uh, they want to integrate their cultural activities and uh, values and their language in the um, in the study environment. Uh, family commitments and time management. They have to juggle between work life and. Uh, study uh, studies work life and uh, social life as well and uh, it becomes sometimes really difficult for them to manage everything uh, yeah, and uh, also their kids uh, because they, they have family commitments and they have to look after elderly, elderly people and uh, their kids and they have no helping hand so uh, the family is the priority which becomes a hindrance uh, financial matters, uh, they are, uh, it has to be affordable for them because, uh, 
I mean, uh, to study as well as to work, it, it becomes difficult for them to manage uh, financial fi uh, finances. Um, they are a close knit family, and they depend uh, they depend on each other for uh, em uh, emotionally as well as financially. Uh, financially. Uh, they also need recognition and respect in the study, in the classroom atmosphere. Uh, sometimes they feel a, a no sense of belonging and they, because they are a shy personality, so it is a struggle for them. Uh, they need flexible study options because uh, they, want to, uh, they want to learn, but because of these external, um, external uh, factors, uh, they they can't focus and uh, uh, they can't focus full time uh, studies so they need a flexible mode of study uh, so this is how we define the point of view and uh, we uh, gave uh, an opportunity to uh, to look to look into the wicked problem and uh, we compared data and uh, we compared and contrasted it with our personal experiences. Uh, we also like broke down the wicked problem in uh, small, small issues and we looked it one by one and we tried to answer who, what, why, who are we focusing on, what are the obstacles, what motivates them, what encourages them and how, what can be done to improve their learning experience. And, and why we need to focus on them, uh, why they need to study uh, and uh, uh, gain, uh, gain confidence. And so this is how we created, uh, this is a defined stage where we defined the opportunity for Unitech to look into the wicked problem and solve uh, one by one. Uh, there are so many emotions go through, go through them, uh, which we can see here, and it is a ladder for them. It is a, uh, it becomes a ladder for them it, uh, to climb up and finally, uh, finally get educated and uh, get a good job. So I will pass on to Clayton now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll be talking about the ideation stage. Um, this is the most exciting stage uh, in design thinking where we create ideas, we bring all ideas on table. Um, on my right, those are the solutions which we think, um, and these are um, the attributes of the wicked problem. So I'm just going to repeat the wicked problem again. How can Unitech launch a resilient, effective, and culturally appropriate tertiary pathway for Maori and Pacific women to help increase enrollment numbers? Um, so what I'm going to ask our dragons and the staff members or the students to match um, the solutions which we have on the right hand with the attributes of the wicked problem. Um, so let's begin with the red ones, the red sticky notes. So what do you think entertainment for family and kids matches with what um, wicked problem or the attributes of the problem? The three red ones. The three red As a group, did they? Um, not group, they're of course friendly. So oh. one can be entertainment and they can be resilient. Okay. So let's begin with entertainment for family and kids. What do you think? What do you mean by creativity? Um, that will help them, um, that will make their life easy when they start. Okay, I've got it there. Yeah, effectivity, that's correct. Um, second one, discounted fees for students studying through pre-recorded modules. Culturally appropriate audience, for example, cultural touch. Culturally appropriate. Let's go to the green ones. That's correct there. Um, the green ones, flexible learning option. You're correct. Resilience. Yes. Um, show talent in class, example, icebreaker in classroom. It's correct. Patrick, you're correct. 
culturally. Culturally, yeah. yeah. Um, and the last one, inviting Maori Pacific address to Curtis. Yeah, that's it. Those are the answers there. And the last one, yellow ones. Um, connect, connect with alumni. Yes, <laughs> That's correct, activity. Um, website and chat box in their own language. Activity? Um, That's activity because they think um, it's a sense of belonging when you have your own website or the person who's talking with them is a Maori person, Maori Pacific person. Um, and the last one, adding more Maori pieces of the person. That goes under effectivity, yes. yes. So yeah, well done everyone. So those are the ideas and we match them with the weekend problem there. Um, yeah, moving ahead, um, Mac, we will take you to, through the prototype and how we did the testing. Thank you, Clayton. So now we're seeing our prototype. So we conducted like three prototypes. So the first one is low fidelity, second is medium fidelity, and high fidelity. So what we're showing now is the low fidelity. So during this time, uh, on the left side, you can see the current journey of the Maori and Pacific women. So we envision their journey as like climbing a mountain. And it shows that it's really steep right now. And what we wanted to propose is to add like steps or yeah, steps and resting um, huts so that they can rest and they don't need to go straight to the top to achieve their goals and dreams. So we have communicated that, presented that with our class and communicated it to our client. And after that, we proceeded with our medium fidelity and we have incorporated their feedback into our medium fidelity. So this is what we've come up with our medium fidelity. So um, we suggested to have an installment payment options like flex flexible learning and it should not be time bound. We could design a, the module and it could be uh, culturally appropriate and provide a family friendly facility like creating a playground for kids, yeah, and hiring more Pacific, Maori and Pacific staff in teaching and enrollment, and embedding Maori and Pacifica cultures while they are teaching, and showing talents in class, like maybe singing or dancing, like just an icebreaker, and also to show respect in each indiv individuality and their culture, and then they become or credit graduates. But after we have presented this to our client, um, they found out some irrelevant or something that's already been done by Unitech. So they have pointed out the installment payment options that is considered as um, irrelevant for them because they think that it's not a responsibility for Unitech. Um, and also for providing family or family and friends and kids friendly facilities that would be too expensive for them. And also to connect with alumni, they say it's already been done right now. But uh, after that, we tweak our um, prototype, our solutions, and we incorporated that in our um, uh, final fidelity, the high fidelity one, and this is what we have come up, and so I will proceed with the recommendations on what we have come up. So with the time management, we are suggesting to have a flexible learning without learning, which is not time, time bound. So when they study, uh, we suggest that perhaps the courses would be like not, not as per the current um, like per semester. They could continue learning. They can do their studies, but they can pause it whenever they want 
perhaps if they have some family problems like that or yeah something is happening in their lives so they can pause their studies and also installment payments and discounted fees for students for studying through pre-recorded course modules so during our co-creation with some of our persona in the high fidelity um, one of them suggested that since it's going to be an online uh, module uh, what if to propose it as an installment payment and they could pay only per module and not per the entire subject yeah and also to make it culturally appropriate uh, course design it needs to be anchored in the core values of the Maori and Pacifica women and we could use um, their ethnic languages in the website and also in the class and on-campus daycare used with discounted fees so um, to solve the conflict with the cost of creating a, a place for the family of Maori and Pacifica women we thought of using the the daycare center within the campus and Maori and Pacifica women who are studying in unit they could um, leave their children in there and for a low price and we could use the early early learning early childhood learning at teaching um, to do um, volunteering on the daycare center or do an internship with them yeah and we could connect with the alumni through social media so what we're suggesting here is crowdsourcing so we could create a social media page where a Maori and Pacifica women or it could be open to anyone who has free time and they could register and provide um, specify what kind of services that they would like to offer to the students and they could schedule also the dates that they cannot be they can be contacted by them and also we could we are proposing to hire more Maori and Pacifica staff and that ends our presentation thank you Okay, question is uh, <coughs> grabs. Thank you. Hi, um, I just wanted to come back to your statistics that you talked about at the very beginning, and um, there was that graphic on declining numbers, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to see if that was like what that if you're aware of what that looks like in comparison to the overall S or overall student numbers, because I don't know if that would probably help paint some, you know, put that into more perspective if we had, um, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> that if that was just a really high year for enrollments generally, and the Pacific um, portion, let's say, is 10% of all enrollments, and that follows that trend throughout the years, you know what I mean? If this is a, yeah, I'm not explaining myself well. No, but, but, but on that, what was happening before then? Was there a problem before then, or was the problem in 2020? So we didn't have data before that, so uh, based on the data which we received or the research which we have done, it's from 2018 to 2021. So where, what's the problem? Is 2020 the problem? Starting from 2020 to 2021, the numbers are declining. Off. What happened? COVID. COVID is the main reason. So your solutions aren't addressing what happened? So our solutions are addressing what can we do to increase the numbers, but yeah. I didn't understand. So are you suggesting that you um, <laughs> I'm suggesting there's not a problem. Yeah, I'll give you mm. yeah, I, um, I've got a couple of questions around what you've done. So the, the slide where you had the unique criteria versus persona needs, you I wondered if you ranked those to figure out where you thought to, to work first. Because then in your final slide, it seemed to me you basically had three lifestyle reasons 
which relate to the fact that these people are women. And then you've got three cultural reasons which relate to the fact that they are Pacifica or Maori. And I was just wondering which of those sets of factors is most important, because I suspect it's the lifestyle, childcare, cost, and family time can. Isn't that really what you're talking about? Yeah, I think uh, we're, we have mainly focused on the family and the culture. Like, it's part of their culture and their family. They want to provide for their family and take care for them. Yes, yeah, so I guess that would be the main priority, and then the finance, finance will come next. Yeah, and then community going out. So from inside going out. So. Can I ask another question on this slide as well? I just want to know um, where this information came from. Was this from qualitative and quantitative? Who did you speak to? Was this statistics that you had, or where did this come from? Yeah. This information in particular. Yeah. Thank you for that question. So all of these unique criteria came out from our empathy um, and doing our uh, primary and secondary research. So we were doing uh, questionnaires, interviews, and also um, reading through some journals about Maori Pacific women and their journey in pursuing uh, tertiary education. Yeah. I was just wondering why you guys decided to uh, focus on the female persona. Um, did you compare the number of enrollments in both men and women and saw so that there was more decline in women? Or, yeah, what, what was the thinking behind? So during our preliminary um, uh, research and empathy, um, we talked to one of the persona and she said what came out from our conversation is that the Maori and Pacifica women in their culture, they're, after they finish high school, they're expected to take care of their family. Like, so we thought like maybe if we create a new pathway for them, bridge that gap and break that barriers, the taboo, that they could improve their lifestyle, uh, their um, their life, their future, if they pursue a tertiary education. That's why we focused on the Maori and Pacifica women. And also with the declining numbers, but with our uh, research, we were not able to compare with the numbers of the men. Maori and Pacifica women, but and we cannot like do all of that due to time constraints and resources as well, because it took like two weeks for us just to get the information of those Maori and Pacifica women. Numbers. Yeah, the declining numbers. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it, it's not a numbers game about whether you make that choice or not, and and, and to some extent, I vaguely remember discussing it. It's, it was the tougher problem mm. to to solve. Men mm. had a pathway. That women mm. had l less Less of a strong yeah. pathway. Yeah. So we I mean, said, right, let's, let's go for the more wicked problem. Yeah. Yeah. There's something there. Um, it's on, you, you've got support role models over on, on the right there. And you did mention hiring Maori and Pacific staff, which I'm guessing is a role modelling function partly. But um, I reckon a good um, communication tool would be success stories mm. of. Pacific women, Maori women, who have studied despite having these constraints on their lives and done well. You know. One of my top students presently has 12 children. She's a Pacific mum. And um, she's top of the class. I mean, I just take my hat off to how she does that. So there's some stories that could be really inspirational. My, my mum wanted 12 kids so she could have a cricket team. <laughs> I think 12 quid, you've, you've probably got a structure that one role yeah. organises the rest of it. Uh, Patrick. <laughs> so did the, 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 back to that graph, again you know, I'm suggesting it's not a problem. Did, did you determine that, that, that the decline was not just Unitech, but countrywide, or did they, or did the people that were 
declining for media tech, go someplace else. AUT, yeah. Massey, Auckland. We couldn't, like, due to, yeah, it's because of time constraint, we cannot possibly, like, we just focus on unit tech. Yeah, and with our with our limited resources, money and time, we can uh, like do more of that research. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fair enough to sort of dig deep yeah. with with one case, the unit tech case, rather than go beyond. But but yeah, when you get to about uh, his yeah. questions are valid. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. In that would have been a good idea to compare it or yeah. what are the research yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think COVID has affected institutions in New Zealand very differently. Mm -hmm. Some university enrollments have gone up because of in, inbound uh, local people have been going to university rather than doing other sorts of things. Right. They've lost jobs and things like that. So mm -hmm. there's, there's been uh, pivots all over the place in different sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The um, you talked about the flexible time line for people to study, yeah. and uh, I see what you're saying there. And I think you possibly are reaching too far when you say, "Oh, they can just stop and start when they like." But you could um, you could say a modular approach um, to create some flexibility. But institutionally, we would have great trouble tracking and reporting student successes if we didn't know when they were finishing and stuff like that. So you'd have to just maybe reframe that solution suggestion a little bit more. Can I um, get some clarification please? I was a bit confused. So one of your um, up the hill graphics talked about how um, uh, things about instalment payment options and stuff like that and you were saying that when you spoke to the clients that they were just like irrelevant solutions for them um, but they were also still included in your recommendations so I was a little bit confused as to why they've said already that they're not good solutions or you know relevant and why you're still writing that recommendation So, yeah, regarding the weekly installment payments, um, we thought, like, since it's going to be a pre-recorded um, pre -recorded, uh, modules, and Unitech will not need to use so much resources about it. So, it's, all, it's already there. So, perhaps that could be offered still as an installment payment. Yeah. It just seems you're just counting the feedback you've got, just you saying they've said it's irrelevant, but it's still in your recommendations. Yeah, yeah, that's why we tried to tweak it, so, and then offering that instead. So, rather than uh, just okay. weekly installment payments of the course when they come, when they come to study at Unitech, so maybe an installment payment only for the pre-recorded or um, the modules. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good pivot, yeah. Sorry. How did you know that these solutions are actually addressing a problem? <laughs> I mean, how do you know? I mean, you're, you're, you've come up with some interesting solutions, but how do you, how do you validate that, they, that they're actually addressing why the drop-off happened in the first place? They struggle with the finances, so that so, so, so Priyanka, did they, was that the reason that there was a drop off? The major factor, like at present, if we look at this in mind, the drop off, because they are struggling with finances, and uh, if we reduce the cost of the study, it will greatly affect the the enrollment process. Um, I think so that if um, you guys had um, compared the, the, the first graph to the regular enrolls or like mm, the, the mm. all other market, you would have seen that naturally, yes, we do have less Pacific students. 
But if it was like ten percent across all those years or yeah. something, then so yes, we can see a drop in 2020. But I think the numbers would have been lower than other types of enrollment, so other um, target audiences. So maybe this graph is a little bit misleading. Mm. What you should compare is the other types of mm. students, the other categories of students, and what. Yeah. So yeah. Further data would help. Yeah. But so you just so say we want to see the, the the percentage. Did the percentage go down? Then we, even though the number went down, but if the percentage went down as well, then we've got a double double problem. But if the percentage stayed similar, then that may not be a problem. It may be that it went up because mm -hmm. they're already in New Zealand as as the mm -hmm. students. Good point. Yeah. Right. That's actually one limitation of our study because, as what I mentioned earlier, it takes time to get those data. And even with, like, after we asked for that information, like, they were very um, conservative on which information should be um, given to us. Because so, of yeah. the privacy policy. Because of the Unitech. privacy yeah. policy of Unitech. So it's really hard for. Yeah. Oh, it's not actually an aggregate. The info, the data that was given to us was not an aggregate. We had to summarize it because they can. They don't know how to access it in an aggregate way. Ah. So okay. yeah, we had to do all the summing up of all of those. So right. it took so, so we much do have, time. We do yeah. have data, but we don't have mm -hmm. um, any specific model specific yeah. for that particular group or the age group. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. So we had to filter it out. We had to filter it. You didn't mm -hmm. have access to BI. <laughs> I yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. I think that age group thing is a, a real thing because the um, those lifestyle factors which you have addressed apply to women with a family, so I'm guessing women maybe over the age of 25 or even possibly over the age of 30 mostly, and um, so I think your, your target audience for these measures could be, you could be focused down a bit more with more research. Right, thank you for your questions. Let's just see if there's any more uh, feedback on uh, strengths and weaknesses of the presentation. Sure, mm -hmm. that's new to you. It's our new dragon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, thank you for your presentation, guys. I think it was really good. Um, I really liked how you covered all the different personal needs. I think it was really complete. Um, you talked about lots of good points to look into for your solutions and I like how you try to find one solution per problem identified uh, in the persona. So I like that, the link between the start of your presentation and the end. Um, good interaction with the audience as well. Um, my only feedback is I would, it would have been good to maybe define the different categories like effectivity, resiliency and culturally appropriate. I was a bit lost in this part personally, mm. uh, but it could have just been me as well. <laughs> and maybe it would have been good to cover that we've got two different target groups, so the people who are currently enrolled at Unitech and who dropped, so we're trying to retain these people, and the people who are not enrolled yet because we're trying to attract them to Unitech as well. I think there might be some different solutions for both groups to explore here. Mm. Good point. Good point. And lost one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with all of those as well. Um, some good things, I thought it was really nice at the beginning to have a really clear overview. Your structure throughout the presentation was really well done. Um, and you really presented a clear vision of the design thinking process, tying us into that at every stage. Um, one thing was just on your presentation skills themselves. I, I sense there's a bit of nervousness and hesitancy, which I totally get. Um, but I think all of you could have increased volume and, and stuff like that just to make it a bit more audience friendly. I'm just repeating what they said really. I thought the presentation was well structured and well set up with that uh, contents page. Like the visuals, mm -hmm. um, 
Well, I thought the interaction was good, mm. although, um, yeah. Um, and I liked the way you did your prototype development and explained that process. I thought that was, um, talked us through that step quite nicely. And the mountain climbing analogy is um, very good. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I can actually. Go on. <laughs> um, I actually enjoyed it. Um, just one thing. Um, maybe mention about the limitations in the beginning. Um, and eye contact. Um, I really enjoyed it. And involving the audience on the idea um, slides where really God is going. Yeah, really love that Yeah, I, I, I quite like the presentation as well. Uh, other than I was just <laughs> just struggling with the, the, the from the first slide on that you're not solving a problem that actually existed. That aside, the pre I thought you guys that I like the structure, I like the visuals, the, the slides, you know, it was it was good visuals. Color great, the, the the way that you laid it out, and the and the sequence and the storytelling. I think it all it all worked. Yeah, and the fact that you were a little bit nervous. Yeah, I get that. But um, again, congratulations to those of you that are English as a second language doing this, because man, that is tough. So well done. Yeah. Thank you to the American open speak English as well. Sometimes. Quite, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> a nation. Uh, divided by English. Right. Okay. Thanks uh, very much. Uh, I, I've got nothing to add. Uh, my dragons have been a, a fantastic uh, team of, of people that have learned how to give um, uh, friendly dragons speak and, and, and constructive um, improvement feedback. So uh, thanks very much to, to the team. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. Sit down. So, uh, the judges will uh, wrap up their, their, their marks, and, and this is the afternoon, and I managed to press the record button on the Zoom recording this afternoon. This morning it didn't get recorded, but um, that's uh, excellent. I think through the four presentations that we've had, we've seen different interpretations of the design thinking process, uh, and, it's, and different teams have been able to get through different parts of the process and they've shown how they did that process and the results of that process and that, that has been a, a, a strength and this is what we expect at postgraduate level is to adapt and innovate and appropriate the bits which are appropriate to the issue, the wicked problem that you, that you chose. So uh, very well done. And I think we've all learned from everybody's present presentation. Thanks again. That's signing off from uh, Master of Applied Business, Design Thinking for Business. Woo